Okay, so I'm joined now on the Village Escape Pod by um, campaigner from Leitrim for Choice, Bernie Lenan. Bernie, thanks very much for joining us today. Hi, Morgan. Um, okay, we're, we're going to be discussing the developments over the last, at the time of recording, um, the last 48 hours, really, I guess, with the state of play on the new National Maternity Hospital out mm-hmm. at the St. Vincent site. Um in an ideal world, let's say we, we weren't facing uh, the, the shenanigans that we're, that we're talking about today. What did we expect from the new National Maternity Hospital as stakeholders, as citizens? OK, I should first of all say not just Leitrim for Choice, I'm also the chair of the Our Maternity Hospital campaign, the campaign against church ownership of women's health care. And that probably answers your question to some degree. In an ideal world, the state owns public assets. The state provides healthcare for its citizens in a secular fashion uh, without any interference from any religious ethos, from any denomination, uh, in this case, notably the Roman Catholic Church. But that's what happens in an ideal world. Okay. And, um, well, I suppose obvious, obvious answer coming. Where do we actually stand What's the state of play as of today at time of recording? Okay, the state of play is the cabinet has put a hold, a pause on proposals, a memorandum, which was brought to it by the Minister for Health, Stephen Donnelly, uh, to further a debacle that's been going on for nigh on 10 years now. Since 2013, when the then Minister for Health, James Riley from Fine Gael, proposed the co-location of a new National Maternity Hospital on a site at St. Vincent's in Elm Park. Um, Since then, there's been back and forth and back and forth. The latest offering from the Health Minister is a convoluted Byzantine, labyrinthine, it's been called Kafka-esque, set of legal documents which are supposed to convince us that moving the National Maternity Hospital on owned by the St. Vincent's Healthcare Group, will not result in any religious interference. The Cabinet weren't convinced. The board of the HSE signed off on it in April, sorry, in March. Uh, but two of their members were not convinced, one of whom is a professor of law, Professor Deirdre Madden at UCC, who specialises in medical ethics and health law. Uh, and the other, Dr. Sarah McLaughlin, is the patient advocate on the board. So their dissenting opinions are hugely important. They didn't feel that guarantees given around ownership, control and governance were sufficient. The cabinet didn't feel that such guarantees were sufficient. We have never felt that such guarantees were sufficient. The minister didn't do his homework and he's been sent away to tidy things up. He's to publish relevant documents. He's to appear before the health committee and explain all this to them and then go back to cabinet who may or may not sign off on it. That's the state of play at the moment. OK, so, so you, you, you clearly wouldn't have any great faith in the bona fides given by the Sisters of Charity. No, um, the Sisters of Charity have said that they are no longer involved in the St. Vincent's healthcare group. Um, But the new company, which has been formed by the St. Vincent's Healthcare Group, is called St. Vincent's Holdings. And the sisters, while not directly involved in it, have left behind their ethos in the shape of the constitution of the company, which has identical core values to their own company and to the founder of the congregation, Mother Mary Aikenhead. So really, we're not taking anything at face value. This thing is very complicated, as I said, very complex and very labyrinthine. And we'd be forgiven, I imagine, for asking the question, if there's nothing to hide, why has anybody gone to such lengths to hide it? Okay. so so you do do you think that's what is Stephen Donnelly actively hiding it or is it just uh, is it lumbering without checking his homework? Uh, It's lumbering without checking his homework. Certainly. Um, I'm, I'm not sure Stephen Donnelly is 100% behind this project at all. Um, I actually believe that Stephen Donnelly is pro-choice. He said he was pro-choice at the time of the referendum in 2018. And I've no reason not to believe that. I don't believe 
his heart is 100% behind this project. And I think he's trying to sell us something that he doesn't believe in. Um, and really, you'd want the mind, or as Enda Kenny might have said, the, the gimlet eye of a canon lawyer to understand the legal stuff. You really would. I spoke to a solicitor this morning who's just finding it bamboozling. Okay. And I it's, think that may be the intention to just bamboozle everyone until we just give up and go away. Okay. But we're not going away, you know. So, D- D- Donnelly, you would feel um, declared himself as pro-choice. Mm-hmm. Uh, can can we, do you think, I know it's a you know kind of leading question, but do you think we can actually trust our TDs, our Arctis members, on that score, it is, is saying I'm pro-choice or I'm pro-same-sex marriage or indeed any of these revolutionary social um, you know, upgrades to our constitution, you know, are they just saying it to keep their bum in a limo? Oh, I mean, far be it for me to suggest that any of our committed and conscientious politicians would say whatever it takes to keep their bum in a limo. Um Obviously, they're 100% honest and decent people. But taking them at face value, the bottom line is saying things is very, very easy. Mm. Doing things is where it matters. Talking the talk is one thing, but we all know walking the walk is is where it really counts. And declaring yourself pro-choice and then standing by while a national maternity hospital, a public asset, which will cost upwards of of 1 billion euro, probably two and more, is handed over to the successor company of a religious organisation, is not quite pro-choice. It really isn't. It defies explanation. It defies belief, to be honest. Okay. Do do you think, just just moving back to uh, more specifically um, the members of the Oireachtas and quite specifically our female TDs, Mm -hmm. Um, I, I maybe simplistic to assume, simply based on gender, that that the a, a a choice in favor of correct reproductive rights would be you know very much central to you if mm-hmm. you are a female TD. Do you think um, our female TDs are are doing enough to ensure the safeguarding of those reproductive rights? Not just the government parties now but but you know we're, we're told over the years that gender quotas are very important and there's been far too much a, and that it really has been a very much a pale male and stale heavy lineup mm. in in the doll over the years and, and still is um do you think do you think that loading the deck the other way quite correctly with a with a better gender balance is that is that is that favouring this reproductive rights issue? Mm-hmm. Um, firstly, I would say that the deck is nowhere near loaded when we have 22% female representation in the doll. Uh, women make up more than 51% or females make up more than 51% of the population. So we're nowhere even close to adequate representation. We have some wonderful women in the doll. We have some incredible women. Um, we also have some who aren't so hot. Um, but really women as men are not just one large homogenous group. We will have differences of opinion. We won't all agree on the same thing. Um, We need a lot more women in the doll, but we also need women who are willing to buck the party line on issues like this. Um, On the 31st of March, I was in the doll chamber when the minister came forward with statements on the, the new National Maternity Hospital And there wasn't a single female TD on the government benches, not one. There weren't very many male TDs either because none of them obviously consider it hugely important. There were half a dozen men on the government benches, not one woman. There were some fantastic contributions from women on the opposition benches, most notably Catherine Connolly, who was astoundingly good in in her words on this, but also Breed Smith deserves a very honourable mention, Rada Cronin from Sinn Féin, Joan Collins. These women spoke eloquently, along with some men uh, from the opposition, but it was shameful to see that not a single female TD stood up on the government benches because they just weren't there. Now, if that isn't a dereliction of duty, I don't know what is. 
Yeah, quite clearly, it's 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 it should should really be all hands to the pumps at that stage. You'd expect. Well, I would have thought so. Yeah, I would have thought so. Um, we did have uh, Paul McAuliffe from Fianna Fáil say that at parliamentary party meetings, female TDs were raising this issue, but they weren't standing up in the doll mm. when they should have been that on would be this where it counts, issue. Yeah. Yeah, it, that, that is actually where it counts. And really, if you're not prepared to stand up for what you believe in, in the national parliament, where it counts, are you really any great use to anyone? No. <laughs> to answer your question. Um, now, just we're going to wrap this up quite soon. I've only got a couple more questions for you, Bernie. Um, okay. Is it this is, uh, this is a, a, a back to our ideal world? Uh, what assurances... <laughs> in your opinion, do we need about the National Maternity Hospital? Is, is, it, a, is it a simple raft of, of, of wishes is, as, mm -hmm. as, as a list? Okay, it's, it's, a, it's not even a simple raft of wishes. It's not even a list. It's one thing. We the site on which our new National Maternity Hospital is to be built, Could I wherever get you to repeat that, that may be. You, you broke up there. Could I get you to repeat okay. that? Sorry. We must own the site on which our new National Maternity Hospital is to be built. It's as simple as that, whether it's in Elm Park, whether it's in Tala, wherever it is, we must own the site. The days of handing over billion euro public assets are over. No more. OK. And uh, what, what would you say to our fellow citizens in terms of reaching out and campaigning? Is, is, it, is, is it the time to... To really get out there, phone TDs, visit mm -hmm. TDs, email TDs. Well, the best time to speak up on this was yesterday. Right. The second best time is today. You need to email your TDs. You need to write to your TDs. You need to phone your TDs. And you need to show up at their offices. You need to show up in Dublin if you're there next Saturday week on the 14th of May at 2 o'clock outside the Dáil, where we take our protest to the seat of power and we tell the government in no uncertain terms that our new National Maternity Hospital must be public and secular. OK, well, that's a, a very strong and clear closing message to leave our, our listeners and viewers today. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, any, Morgan. And um, I'm sure we'll be circling back to this as, as the as the story develops. Mm -hmm. I, you know I, where to find us. Yeah, I know where to find you. I have, I have a feeling we, we it might take us a, a little bit more to wrest control from the, 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 the fingers of the church. But mm -hmm. we're not going away. We're not going away. We're in this for the long haul. Very happy to hear that. Thanks very much for joining us, Bernie. Thanks, Morgan.